Hello everybody and welcome back to more of the Labyrinth of Versailles. Here we are, UG's first real assignment at the Vancouver International Airport, Terrorist Hijacking. The origin of the affair lay in a security forces raid on the stronghold of an extremist group known as the Divine Textbook. Lauded by the DOD as part of an ongoing hardline policy against insurgents of all sorts. Following a violent firefight, the group's leader, one Arnie Malik, had been captured and taken into custody. The Divine Textbook, founded in 1964, held Western education to be the root of all evil. It carried out a long campaign of anti-government resistance, funded largely through drug dealing and kidnap for ransom. And in recent years, they had launched a series of attacks on churches, police stations, and military facilities, punctuated by repeated shootouts with Homeland Security forces. The president, who publicly committed to stamping out terrorist activity, ordered a thorough search and destroy operation. The resulting raid killed 65 members of the organization and robbed them of their leader. In response, the group had occupied Vancouver International Airport, from which Mr. Malik was scheduled to be extradited for trial. Using the website of a local newspaper, they'd posted demands for his release. Long story short, it was basically one of those give us our boss back or we'll blow up a bunch of crap deals. Not so different from a fight between children, except in terms of scale. Of course, this was something of a problem for all the big shots who spent the last few years making grandiose promises about the elimination of terrorism. If they agreed to release Malik, their opponents would spin it as a violation of their public commitments. But if the commotion got out of hand, their competence would be called into question. Neither outcome seemed too appetizing. I'm not sure how the behind the scenes wrangling went, and I'm not particularly interested. But one way or another, they ended up appealing for assistance for the anti terror forces of numerous allied nations, making the whole tangled mess even more complicated. <laughs> テロ指導者の解放も無理なら身代金も法外だ。とてもじゃないが飲める要求じゃない。しかしですね。空港施設に合わせた約400人の人質の中には在海人や著名人、政府関係者や新保持務に参加していた学会関係者も多数います。まあ
犯行グループも当然警戒しています屋外のそれも超長距離の狙撃ですよ立地条件的にも常に強風が吹いていますし今の時期は霧が多く発生しますとても狙撃できる環境じゃない世の中にはそれを最初の一発でぶち当てるやつがいる私が知っているだけでも3人は心当たりがあるではその3人の誰かに依頼をそうしたいところだが1人は18年前に死んでるもう1人は右目の視力を失って退官刑務所に入ってるとかまだジャパンアーミーアカデミーで後期訓練中だ自衛官だというのかいいや s a ズ s の予備工作員だおお、that's me, that's me 予備学生を現場に出すのは問題があるのではアンチマテリオンの使用許可をいただければうちの狙撃犯でもなんとかうーんうちは例の電極銃問題以降オーバーキルに過敏でねできればよその人間に任せたいとたいなそのための外部協力でしょうよ問題は確実に一発で仕留める必要があるということだ大義の言うその予備学生はやれるのかねそれは私が保証しましょうただ日本から呼び寄せるとなればそれなりに金がかかる I demand an in-flight meal 構わん費用はうちが出す今すぐ呼び寄せてくれでは失礼して電話を私だ私だアニエス・ギャレット大尉だああ挨拶はいい貴様に頼みたい仕事がある Our job. Tell me, what is it? あの中座み私は一応貴様の上官だぞ少しは態度に気を使えんのかそれと私をアニーと呼ぶな OK アニー何やら面倒そうな相手ですな私は何かとんでもない選択ミスをしたんじゃないかそれで来られるのかうん,んなんだ言ってみろ I demand a large cash payment up front. I want to use my own team. And, um, give me a. I want a plate with the cheese that I like. You know, the one. These are not jokes. <笑>ジャイケルはもう死んだと教えてやれいこいつは知ってて言ってるんだ要は行きたくないと言ってるんだろういいから来い今すぐ来い10分後には現地の人間を迎えに出す OK they're, okay, they're in Toronto right I think that's where they said right How long would it take to fly someone from Japan all the way here I mean, it's gotta be a long time, even on the fastest of airplanes. Seems like by the time you get him over here, many, many hours would have passed, and who knows what would have happened. Okay, <laughs> not a problem. As always, Captain Garrett didn't have much of a sense of humor, poor girl. I don't make a habit of refusing invitations from women, but being called halfway around the world with a single phone call, I knew I was a pawn. But this felt like a bit much, you know? Judging from the way my ride showed up prematurely after two minutes instead of ten, and the fact that it was an MV22 Osprey instead of a car, the situation seemed to be fairly urgent. Before I even had a chance to murmur a few admiring words about the tilt rotors, I was pushed into the aircraft, still holding my favorite rifle to my chest. And as soon as I strapped me firmly into my seat, the details of the operation popped up on the ICS. The Osprey immediately headed out to sea, traveling as far as it could, and landed on an aircraft carrier. There I boarded a C-2 transport plane, which hopped over to an airport that served one of NATO's air defense installations. As they were refueling for us for the last leg of the journey, a large number of people with special forces patches on their uniforms climbed on board. I was used to this sort of atmosphere, but that didn't mean I wanted to make small talk. Times like these. Pretending to be asleep was always the best move. Hey, Shorty! I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh! Hey! 
寝てやがるエアダニー寝てないよ寝てるふりをしているだけで How's it going? Oh, I'm doing great. How you doing? Get any new games lately? Danny Robbie, they called you too as well. Kimi ga yobareta no nara boku mo yobareru sa. Boku wa yabu inu shoutai no zunou da kara ne. I don't know about that. Jodan jare. Ore wa California de yoroshiku yatte ta zunoi. Totsuzen yobidashita. Shigoto sabotte donuts kutte tokoro muriyari renkou sareta ze. Oh, you, I'm sure you missed a lot. What about the others? Jason and Eddie are waiting for the first time. Oh. Mili is... Well, she got caught up, so this time she was a fan. Oh yeah, she wanted to be like a pilot, right? Or we kind of convinced her to maybe... Reach for a little more, you know what I mean? See, switch specialties. I didn't know that. She was going to get a ship to the ship. She was going to Miramar. I don't know what Miramar is, but... Sounds like a nice place. 本当は君を追いかけて日本に行くためにズケランキムを希望したらしいけど、そう簡単にはいかないよね。そもそもバカだし。ああ、she was never that dumb。そういうお前だってアキーバに憧れて日本キムを希望したらしいじゃないか。Oh, that doesn't surprise me。僕は頭がいいからね。ちゃんと赤坂キムになったさ。What? You're in Japan now。日本とアメリカを行ったり来たりだけどね。最近は一ヶ月の地下で仕事してるよ。That's pretty cool. Basement edge. Wait a minute. Never mind. Not even gonna ask. Why didn't you say anything? We could have met up. Chaoho ikka no shigoto da kara ni. Kantan ni wa soto to renaku ga tore nai no sa. And there's a pretty thick wall between them and sirs, from what I hear. Which isn't much because the wall is pretty thick. So you koto. Nihon te ya. You have a little sister? Oh yeah, that's right, you have a sister. Forgot she came to visit you. Well, that's kind of a tough question, but on the whole, I guess it's not too bad. Well, to be fair, here in the States, it's kind of true. In most places, also. <laughs> I, mean, I live in a small town of about like 4,000 people, and we probably got like five or six convenience stores just in our little area. Oh, what's going on? Oh. どうやら人質の中に糖尿病患者がいたらしくて、僕らの到着を待っている余裕がなくなったみたいだね。現時刻より17分前に空港警察の狙撃犯によって犯行グループのリーダーを射殺。He's already dead。同時に突入犯による突入を開始。同犯により施設内の一部制圧に成功。What's good？ 一部を除き人質の救出に成功。現在は施設内に設置された爆発物の撤去作業中だってさ。Okay. Look at look above you. Look at this view. That's that's worth it. Yeah. ここでアペンドミッションだ。Bonus mission. What? 突入を回避したテロリストの一部が人質を一人連れて逃走。エプロンに待機中だったビジネスジェットを占拠して立てこもりを始めたらしい。か。捕まってんじゃねえよ、ドンクセ野郎だな。野郎じゃないよ。逃走したテロリストの手の内に落ちた人質は1名。性別は女性。年齢は不明だけど、中学生と推測されるってさ。Well, gotta save them. I mean, gender doesn't matter, right? 名前は現在調査中だって。まいったな、ガキを人質にされると、うかつに手は出せないぞ。That's true. To. Wareda ga uruashi no garret tai kara nyuden. Yomu kai? Go ahead. Please. Hatsu Anies garret tai. Ate Keizami Yuzuri. This instant damn it. Ima sugu koi, totto to koi, sama ga hisyou da. Sounds urgent. I should probably go over there post haste. Zuiben to azette ru ma. Wouldn't you be stressed? 状況が変わったみたいだね
Three. Oh. Well, I would imagine it'd be kind of hard to snipe someone who's actually in an airplane. Hmm. What do they want? They probably want one of those cheese plates. Nanyoto pilot to Nane. Hanin no Nakaniwa, so you de Kiriats got story more in Irashi. So I'm not gonna get it. Why do the terrorists always ask that? Why do they do that? Negotiator of Zujide, pilot to Hitojicho Kokan Surteanga da Sarete Irukara, Hitojicho Kusuno Chansua, Sono Timing no Ichido Kiri. Shahebut no Nai Kasoro dashi. Shakuriwa, Nisen Nichikai. Hmm. Two thousand. That's not gonna work. I mean, even with special ammo in perfect condition, 1600 is as good as it gets, and given the weather there, it's more like 800. And you only really got one shot. Because if you miss and they realize that you're shooting at you, that person's dead. Uh, I don't know about that. Kore wa Mikakuni no Joho Dakedo. Do ya Hitojini na Tiru Chungaksewa, Nishigawa no Juyo Jimbutsni Kanke Sir Enjarashi. Of course. Shina Seru to Mendo Dayo. I'm not saying it's impossible, but we don't have the right equipment or anything else prepared. When you can't walk around the site before and I look it over from multiple angles, it's damn hard to finish the job on the first shot. When sniping under disadvantageous conditions like fog or darkness, whether or not you've seen the sight with your own two eyes makes a huge difference in your ability to correct by feel. Even with the spotters feeding you the precise range, your sense of distance is always going to be a little off. In most cases, the first shot ends up landing short of the target. All you can do is to try to compensate from experience. That really only gets you so far. The training I'd received in the military was less focused on never missing and more on recovering after the initial miss. <laughs> Oh. I'll be like having a piece of Millie with me. I don't know how I feel about that, but... Cheta? That's an anti-material rifle, isn't it? I don't even know what that is. Uh... It's not really that simple. It never was, really. Oh, my favorite. Thank you. Guess it all comes down to skill and luck, then. Yeah. Even Kusakabe Asuka herself was said to have an effective range of 1600 meters. Given the same equipment and presented with the same conditions, I couldn't produce results equivalent to hers. I just wasn't as good as her yet. Well, for one thing, her powers of concentration were superior to mine. For another, she had years and years more experience. In the first place, while Asuka had taught me the fundamentals and lectured me on the sniper's mindset, she'd never given me any advanced training. In the words of the woman herself, I spent 10 years getting myself to this level. It ain't the sort of thing you can figure out from a couple words of advice. Once you're past a certain skill level, the only way to improve is by picking up on the tricks through sheer experience. Exactly helpful. <laughs> it was frustrating that Asuka could do things I couldn't. I mean, for a while there, I tried imitating her in every possible way. But eventually, I realized that there was no way. I never catch up. But eventually, I realized there was no way I'd ever catch up using that method. By the time I got to where she'd been, Asuka had already improved even further. After that, I started testing out my own methods, trying to find a technique that Asuka wouldn't be able to manage. Fundamentally, Asuka's sniping relied on her incredible vision and her instincts, honed through years of experience. My eyesight was just as good as hers, but the difference in experience was hopelessly massive. And so the method I came up with was based on, instead, uh, uh, <coughs> And so the method I came up with was based instead on vision and visualization. Boomerang? Oh, alright. Loud and clear. Haven't heard you call me that for a while, Lieutenant. Really brings me back. <laughs> no, I'm not Pocahontas, but... Forget the wind. I can't see anything but fog. My visibility is less than 10 meters. Are you kidding me? 
そこから約十二度左に標的が位置している I can't see anything except a vague shape When I started as hard sorry When I stared as hard as I could into the gloom I could sense something in the darkness where a gun was pointing But for all I knew it was nothing more than a visual illusion produced by wishful thinking on my part When I held my right eye to the scope all I saw was a field of pure white Visibility really was essentially zero Every once in a while, the wind would part the curtains slightly, giving me a brief glimpse of a white object of some sort, but the instant later, the fog would swallow it up again. After staring at the scope long enough, the constant lateral movement of the fog started to make me feel like I was gliding back and forth myself. How the hell am I supposed to hit anything under these conditions? Damn it, my eyes are spinning. <laughs> Oh, they're really doing it. Okay. It's not can I do it? I have to do it. Nope, not a chance. Can I go home now? Oh, please, no. Wait, come. No. No, oh, you're pretty. You don't need that. You don't need a mud bat, like a facial. I'd rather cover it with something else. Really? Really, dude? Come on. I'm with you on that. No respect. No respect at all. It's only a joke, Captain Garrett. I ma'am. Somehow I'd obtain permission to smear anything I wanted onto a pompous officer's face in the military. A bit of whining can pay off once in a while, but only once in a while. That said, sorry it didn't work out, wasn't gonna cut it at this point. A blindfolded shot at an invisible target, huh? It's not like I've never done it before. On Asuka's mountain, I'd give myself similar challenges several times during my morning rifle games. And during night combat, I often had to fire into the darkness, relying on the momentary light of muzzle flashes to locate my enemies. Never affected my accuracy. Most first-rate snipers aren't relying on their scopes. Just like my master, they can hit their targets based solely on instinct and experience. For them, a scope is nothing but a supplementary tool, allowing them to visualize their shot with greater, greater, greater clarity. There's something other than simple vision at work there. They're seen with their mind's eye more than anything else. For me, that meant con concentrated until I could see colors in the air, a method reliant on visualization, compensating for my lack of experience. I'd gotten the idea from my sister's photographic reading. When Kazuki concentrated, she was capable of rapidly memorizing books as a series of images in her mind, but any color information would usually be lost. However, when she concentrated even more intently, she was capable of discerning colors as well. I guess I'd compare it to those optical illusions that used to be popular, the ones where you stare at the monochrome pattern until a full color image emerged. If you convince yourself that you're looking at something, your eyes will start to see it. With enough concentration, even the wind can take on a visible color. Think of an enemy as a pig, and they look like a pig. Think of them as a bear, and they look like a bear. Conveniently enough, they just that's just the way the mind, my mind worked. Yeah. Loud and clear. It's already running. What bush dog icon? It's not there. Wait, are you talking about this icon of the girl with the dog ears on her head? What the hell is this? Come on, man. You're not designing the logos anymore. You really need to get the illness of your streets. Oh, 
各所に配置したセンサーから風速や大気密度なんかの気象情報を集めついでに地磁気やコリオリなんかも衛星とリンクして計算してくれる優れもの見えないのなら見ないで撃てばいい飛行機の景気飛行みたいなものさ言ってみれば景気射撃ってやつだね This better work, man. あとは計算で出た数字を見ながら想像してミリーのチェイタを信じて引き金を引くだけだ Give it a shot. <laughs> じゃあ最後に手順の確認だ人質の交換が始まった時点で射撃規制が解除される一番やりは君だ君の第一射で犯人を無力化と同時にダニーが率いる制圧部隊が高機動車で吸収部隊突入後はこちらに任せてくれればいい大切なのは絶対に外さないことだ人質を一切傷つけることなく確実に無力化してくれればあとは全部こちらでやる Alright, I got it Let me for a while,、okay? 射撃規制解除は5分後だ5 minutes, OK ふぅ Slowly, deliberately, I pushed the air from my lungs. It gave me two of those special bullets. I loaded them into the chamber one at a time, careful not to damage their coated tips. The gun felt a little different from my usual rifle. Fortunately, this wasn't my first time holding Cheetah. Millie had let me borrow him three times before. It wasn't a problem. Unlike his owner, he was a straightforward guy without any odd quirks. Don't wonder if you're going to hit the target. Don't think about the possibility of failure. No matter how carefully you aim, You'll end up missing every single time if you do. There's only one question worth asking yourself at times like this Am I actually calm right now? In the Navy, the traditional trick is to check the time. Glance down at your watch, check the current hour, minute, and second. If you can tell what time it is, that's proof that you're calm. Something our instructors taught us. You might think that sounds awfully simple, but when you're on an actual battlefield with bullets flying back and forth, it really can be surprisingly challenging to read the time. With an analog watch, you won't be able to tell the difference between the hour hand and the minute hand. If it's a digital model, you won't be able to recognize the segment and numbers on the screen for what they represent. When your head's too full of other thoughts, even the simplest tasks become impossible. I glanced down at my wrist and checked my watch's display. The time was 14 32 Hold file order was probably going to be lifted in less than three minutes. Still, I could read the time just fine. It was going to be alright. It was going to be alright. <sighs> I closed my eyes and took another deep breath. And then, holding my finger to the trigger to remind myself what it felt like, I began to focus on the task at hand. Consciously studying the rhythm of my breathing, I peered through my scope. The only thing visible was pure white fog, falling past like spilled milk trickling across a table. All I needed was a glimpse, just a glimpse. A fraction of a second would be enough. I wouldn't forget what I saw. I'd record it in my mind and burn that image into my eyes. Oh, there we go. No problem. It was only a glimpse, but I captured it perfectly. This wasn't any different from the fight fighting at night. Using brief bursts of light to spot the enemy, I had just had to approach it the same way. Convince yourself they're visible and you'll start to see the colors. It's pure visualization. The more you concentrate, the clearer the image becomes. It was fine. I could see him. More importantly, when we were going, to, when were they going to let me shoot? Sooner or later, the image of mine was going to dissolve back into mist. Ah, music to my ears. About time. Aiming at the image I'd formed in my mind, I pulled the trigger. Firing pin smacked into the case, detonating the primer. Propelled forward by exploding gunpowder, the bullet burst out of the rifled barrel, spinning rapidly as it went. I couldn't fall with my eyes, of course, but even so, by the time my mentally colored image faded back to monochrome, the shot I'd fired reached his target. Bang. <laughs> Mission accomplished as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to end the video off here, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Take it easy.